Cue the sad music. The Badgers fall in the national title game to the Ohio State Buckeyes. The two teams that were clearly head and shoulders above the rest all year meet for a sixth time, and it just does not go the Badgers' way. Wisconsin falls one nothing in the national title game. We're going to break it all down and talk a little bit about what comes next for this Wisconsin women's hockey team, because as there is plenty of movement in the transfer portal for the Wisconsin Badgers men's basketball team. And don't you worry, we're, we're going to get to that on this show tomorrow. There's a little bit of transfer portal questions that we need to start asking, exploring a little bit about this Wisconsin women's hockey team. We'll do it here. Get you primed a little bit for the off season in our final episode of the women's hockey season. Good evening, and thank you for enjoying it with a six-pack. The Scotty Six-Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kendrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six-Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. We are going to bring in, for one final time this season, our women's hockey aficionado, a young man who I am very glad to have developed quite the great friendship with. It is of iHeartRadio and 1070 The Game. WSUM's finest snap the pigskin famed podcast host. It is Noah Clark. Thank you once again, Noah, for, for joining. I wish you'd be joining with, with more happy news uh, as, as we wrap the season. It was all going so well. It was all going so well. I think you've been on here for a total of two losses over this stretch. And unfortunately, the second comes in the worst spot possible. How's it going? Uh, I wish we could have won that game. They were so close. They were so close to winning that game. Just, you know, a tough way for some players to go out like this in Wisconsin. It's a great season and mm-hmm. couldn't get the job done against the Buckeyes. It took me all but maybe a day to try and digest this, and I cannot wait to undigest this today on the show, Kedrick. And it's been such a pleasure for you having me on here throughout this whole season. <laughs> Did you just say it's been such a pleasure for you, Kedrick, having me, Noah, on? Um, <laughs> don't, don't pat yourself on <laughs> My the English has not there, been buddy. good today. Um, I've been exhausted. I did not sleep <laughs> at all last night. I had that national championship game playing in my head over and over again. So... <laughs> Oh, I'm just ready to get it out of my mind. Um, yeah, do not do not pat yourself on the back too hard there as as you recover from from the sleepless night. But let's let's talk about this game where Wisconsin falls one nothing to the Ohio State Buckeyes. Like you predicted, it was a, a defensive battle. Neither team scoring until very late in the third period when the Buckeyes got one past rookie goaltender Ava McNaughton. The two high-flying offenses knew knew each other very well. Uh, no one able to generate a ton of great scoring chances. Wisconsin had had their own. What do you look back on as the biggest play that Wisconsin would like to have back in that one if they were going to get one behind Ohio State goaltender Reagan Kirk? It goes back to the two-on-ones that they had, they had so many two on one opportunities and it was kind of the big thing that they, that they had done against Ohio state in the last two meetings, they played really well in the the mismatch battle where they got into those two on ones and they generated it to where they threw that extra pass. And it was a nice one-time shot. There was a couple of those. They didn't connect on those passes. The one that I think will stand out the most in that game is the one from Casey O'Brien to Lacey Eden, where she's got it almost right on her stick, and an Ohio State skater comes in, hits it with the blade of her stick, and just misses Lacey Eden's stick. That that would have been probably the, the, the goal that decides that game, and it, it, it was tough. It was a tough day for the offense to say that, and those two-on-ones, man, killer, killer for Wisconsin against the Buckeyes. I would I would say it's the second period rush where Casey O'Brien gets in all 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 alone on Reagan Kirk um, with a, a nice little pass from 
uh, Kirsten Sims o- over on the right wing. She got alone, didn't have a ton of time to make a move, goes goes forehand, backhand, tries to go five hole, but it feels like it feels like Reagan Kirk had had that move downloaded uh, uh, on Casey O'Brien knew because how many times we, we see her do that over, over the last month, it kind of knew that she liked to go five hole, liked to go to the backhand in that spot. And Reagan Kirk just stopped her and, and it didn't require really any, any heroics. It was just a well-timed, well-positioned save. You, you would hope to have that back. And overall, I, I just think that the goaltender play in this one was phenomenal. The the only the only one that Ohio State got past Ava McNaughton of the uh, 26 saves that she ended up having on the 27 shots that Ava McNaughton ended up facing. There was just one, just one that got by her and it was tipped off of a Wisconsin stick. <sighs> that's, that's the game in the, in these these tough games, tough battles between the top two teams in the country in a national title game. What do you make of Ava McNaughton, the, the rookie goaltender and her performance down the stretch of the season and in the national title game, man, what a phenomenal performance by Ava McNaughton all the way through to the national championship game. And I don't blame her for that goal. I do mm-hmm. not blame her at all for that goal. It really wasn't her fault. Like you said, tipped off a Wisconsin player stick. It's just an unlucky bounce. It happens. She played phenomenally well in this game, and she played phenomenally well against Colgate all the way through this postseason. She has been really a brick wall for this team. Started out a bit rough against Minnesota, Mm -hmm. but then really started to get it going after that Minnesota game in the the final faceoff. And then, as we've seen her now, I think she's developed way more than what we saw from her through the regular season and Mark Johnson, great call on the goalie decision to go with Ava. Mm-hmm. It'll be something to look forward to for next year. If he, if you know, maybe they have a future starter in net next year for, for number 30, she played really well against the Buckeyes just didn't get it done. And again, to all those Badger fans that want to blame her completely, not her fault at all. Yeah, I, I don't think we're seeing any any Badger fans blaming Ava McNaughton after this one. I, I don't know. Did you see anybody complaining about the goaltender play? Because I, I certainly didn't. No, not not at all. Okay. I mean, I mean, there was probably a few. You know, you could dig through the the stratospheres. I know there's some clowns on on the app formerly known as Twitter that I, had I am chief among them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but um. Yeah, the, the only complaint you can have here is that the, the offense just just couldn't get quite quite enough in this one. I think that's more credit to the Ohio State defense than anything. I think both both times the, these defenses showed up. Wisconsin had 20 block shots in this game. Ohio State had 17 block shots in this one. The, Ohio State held that that top line, that Sims O'Brien Edwards line to just one shot attempt in the first period. A testament to the excellent defensive play of Ohio State. Um and I think it was through and that one shot attempt and ended up getting blocked. So no, no shots on goal for that top line for Wisconsin through 20 minutes. The O'Brien Sims revenge tour and ended up being nothing more than, than a little puff of smoke. Unfortunately, just, just really stings for, for this team to not get the job done. But I think Ohio state was the best team all year. They, they went all in on this season, brought in eight additions through the transfer portal. They have a lot of players exhausting their eligibility. At a certain point, you have to tip your cap off to the Buckeyes for recognizing what their window was and, and cashing in on it. Yeah, and Ohio State, like, being able to go out and get some of the top players in the transfer portal, like you said, they had eight players come in to this team from the transfer portal this year to really improve this roster. They already had great goaltending. And this Buckeyes team, been the best team all year. We've seen it. As, you know, if I'm taking away the Badger bias, Ohio State was one of the best teams all year. They were really a complete team. They just trampled through the competition all year. They they really had nobody to match other than Wisconsin. And when it came to, you know, time to really show up, and when the lights were brightest, they really showed up and got the job done. And 
it's tough. I'm, it's it's tough. I mean, Wisconsin's offense just in this game, they just didn't have it like they like they've had in the last couple games where their offense, you know, starts out really well and then just closes it out in the third. They from start to finish, they just didn't really seem like they had it today and or not today had it on on Sunday and you no, know, that's the way it goes. Sometimes that's yeah. the way the meatball bounces. <laughs> yes, the the one thing I look back on with this season and that Ohio state team that added not just, you know, the, the top scorer from Boston college, not just the top scorer from uh Northeastern, not just one of the best def- defense defenders on Boston college's roster, not just probably the best player in, in Penn state's program history. They also had a, a resurgence of Reagan Kirk in net who supplanted the, the starting role and overtook the starting role from another Ohio state goaltender who had already won a national title backstopping the Buckeyes in net and Reagan Kirk, who had a safe percentage over nine fifty, basically all season long. The last time we recorded the show, it was just after the all America teams were announced. Reagan Kirk was not on either of the all America teams and like call me a, a WCHA Homer here, but that feels like an all time snub, quite frankly, the fact that, and, and maybe it's because she split time for so much of the season and yes, Northeastern had, had a great goaltender. Yes. Uh, Clarkson's goaltender was phenomenal all year. That, that defense overall for, for Clarkson was incredible, but it feels like an all time snub for, for Reagan Kirk to not make either of those all America teams. I, I don't, I don't know if you feel the same way or if, or if you're tired of hear, hearing people uh, give compliments to the Buckeyes, because I'm a little bit tired of seeing Ohio state Buckeyes celebrations crossing my timeline um, too. But I uh, do you have any, do you have any other big takeaways uh, on this Ohio state team that just looked awesome all year and, and Reagan Kirk who looked fantastic. I think you, you said it with Reagan Kirk. It, it's just, you know, the goaltending tandem this year was really a plus a plus plus plus. They were both outstanding when they needed to be Amanda Teeley and Reagan Kirk both yeah. splitting times this year. It is kind of shocking that Reagan Kirk didn't even get like a second team nomination. Her, her mm-hmm. one of her teammates got a second team nomination, but what's even crazier is the Buckeyes. I'm surprised they didn't have more on that list and surprised. I'm, you know, that, Hannah Bilka, you know, or Caleb Barnes, both didn't yeah. get on there. One of them got on that list, but yeah, Reagan Kirk all year, phenomenal stuff. And then even too, the future's bright with that Buckeye team with Joy Dunn. Yep. And she's only a freshman and she won the, the, the freshman of the year this year, rookie of the year yep. in the WCHA and and scored the lone goal in the national title game. Yeah. So it, it almost feels it almost feels, you know, like Caroline Harvey last year. Only difference is this was to go to the national championship game. Yeah, correct, for Car- correct. For Caroline Harvey, this was for Joy Dunn to win the national championship game. So uh, yeah, lots lots of parallels there. Should be interesting to see how the, how these two teams move forward. Let's talk a little bit about what happens next with this Wisconsin team because I think it is a bright future for, for the Badgers. Ohio state has a lot of players exhausting their eligibility. Um, Minnesota has a really young team that got further than I think most expected it to this year, a, a fourth overtime goal, uh, from Clarkson away to getting back to the frozen four after graduating, whatever it was, 10 players off that roster last season, Wisconsin brings back most of this roster. And and I want to start by talking about the players that are definitely leaving. And then let, let you talk a little bit about uh, Wisconsin's incoming recruiting class for, for just a second. There are only three players off this Wisconsin roster that are definitively leaving. First is Britta curl. And before we name the others, I want to take a pause and talk about Britta curl for a second here, because it, it was very well talked about that. She was on the precipice of winning four national titles something that no player had ever done in this sport. She had never lost an NCAA tournament game until just yesterday in the national title game. She was the only player wearing a C or an A, the the standalone captain for the Badgers in her second year as the captain. She's going to go down as one of the great leaders in this Wisconsin Badgers program. And I think if there's anybody hurting 
worse than her after yesterday, you're going to be hard pressed to find them uh, because Britta Curl is an all time badger. Yeah. And the leadership is there that her journey to get to Wisconsin, just an incredible story. And then even playing for the university of Wisconsin and, and playing behind so many great legends. I mean, she got mm-hmm. to play, you know, behind the Shirley's, you know, got to play, I believe with Abby rock for a little bit there yep. as well. And, winning multiple national championships got to experience the journey fully. She had never lost before Sunday, a frozen four tournament game. And and that was something that was huge. And she could have had, she could have even marked her place even more in history as maybe one of the greatest women's hockey players to ever play the sport, you know? Yeah. And certainly one of the most accomplished. Yeah. And I feel for her, you know, just talking to her, such a great player, such a, such a sweet person, you know, off the ice, really, you know, friendly with the media, really friendly with her teammates and just great with the fans. And my hat's off to Britta. You know, what a career she had at Wisconsin. And hopefully she does well in the PWHL if she does decide to go there. But yeah. uh, I, I, I give her all the credit in the world. She did a phenomenal job leading this Badger team for the last two years as their captain and being able to go in to multiple moments and being able to step up. Congrats to Britta. What a wonderful career from number 17. Yeah, I think there's a there's a place for her in the P-dub as, as players are starting to call it now, if she wants that. And she, she reminds me a lot of former Badgers captain, S- Sydney McKibben, who was never the best player uh, on her team, but led Wisconsin to you know some some of the greatest heights unfortunately ended up losing her final game as a badger in in the national title game but was one of the ultimate leaders that you can ask for uh, on the ice so gonna, gonna be sad for for Britta curl to not be walking around laban ice arena next season the the other departures are shayla edwards of course older sister of layla edwards departing on the defense and then anna wilgren who has probably exhausted her eligibility here. She is already a, what is this? One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six year player. She of course being the transfer in from Minnesota state this past season, a former Mankato captain. Let me posit this to you, Noah. One, if you could, would you want Anna Wilgren back? Absolutely. Okay, because she maybe, maybe might come back. The 2021 season, the Olympic, the Olympic camp season, she Mm. sat out that year. So she doesn't have that year burned. And then the following season, she was the captain again of Minnesota State, but only appeared in three games before suffering a season ending injury. And that is one of her one, two, three, four, five years of competition. Oh, maybe this already counts already. But if you take out that, no, if you take out that year and the COVID season, she only has three seasons. So if she can get a medical redshirt exemption for a season ago in which she only played in three games, she has a year of eligibility left and could be a seven year player. Hmm. Interesting. Are, are, are you intrigued by, by the prospect? Because otherwise you are, you are losing two of your top four defense defenders. I mean that, that would be a huge boost. That'd be at least not a huge boost. But that'd be huge for Wisconsin if Anna Wilgren were to come back, I mean, you lose Edwards and curl. That's two seniors. If you can keep Maddie Wheeler and Katie Kotlowski there for another year. And there's been thoughts about Casey O'Brien coming back, which I think Kedrick, you have said to me that that Casey O'Brien is coming back. Mm -hmm. That would be huge for this Badger defense because you look after if they, let's say they don't get Maddie Wheeler back and they don't get Anna Wilgren back. That defense is very young and could be very much in a very, in kind of a pickle. 
in terms of the defensive play and not having as much experience there. Now adding in a Wilgren back, you have some big experience there and you at least have someone who could potentially be a leader for this team because this team right now does not have a leader. After Britta Curl mm. left, this team does not have a leader and Anna Wilgren and Anna Wilgren has been a captain for Minnesota state. So yeah. there is that thought that maybe Mark Johnson could go to Anna Wilgren and, and see if she could step up and be a leader. But yeah, that's a huge one. I think that could be if if she's able to get a medical red shirt and come back for another year, that would be a huge, huge ad for the Badgers right out of the gate on their defense. It keeps their defense at, at top level. That's a, that's a great point from from the leadership perspective that I had not yet considered. Um, that can confirm. Oh goodness, um, that I had not yet considered. Because she spent three seasons as the captain in Mankato. And that would be a big boost to that locker room uh, for, for a team that has been young for so long. Obviously, a lot of these players are coming into their own now and have multiple national title appearances under their belt. But that, that would be big. Uh, you, you mentioned a couple of other players who, who might come back, who might not come back. Casey O'Brien, we talked about on this show, has a fifth year of eligibility. She did tell Todd Molesky of the Wisconsin state journal and Badger extra in an interview, uh, a couple weeks ago that she was planning on using that year of eligibility. You never know. Things could change. A la Connor Asijin, but, um, <laughs> I don't think she's hitting the portal, but you, you never know. Then there are two other players who are technically listed as seniors, but do have years of eligibility remaining. Maddie Wheeler is listed as a senior. She does have a COVID year remaining. And then Katie Kotlowski is listed as a redshirt senior, but has a COVID year remaining as well. Her first season of eligibility was her first season of playing time was the COVID season. She redshirted the year before. Uh, so, so she could come back. You have to think maybe Kotlowski wants to go somewhere where she can have more playing time. Uh, she's kind of buried on that fourth line, but she's a Wisconsin native. Her hometown is lacrosse. You wonder, though, maybe she wants to go like the, the drive from lacrosse to some of these Minnesota programs in the WCHA isn't that different than the Amigi. drive from lacrosse to Madison, right? Like, <laughs> I don't respectfully. I think she's better than playing at Bemidji. <laughs> um, <laughs> she could she could go have some success at uh, Minnesota State and the new coaching regime there. Uh, I think she could be successful at, at St. Cloud. I, I'd be interested. What do you think? I, either take it the Maddie Wheeler direction or the Katie Kotlowski direction. What would the impact be on either one of those two players choosing to use that extra year of eligibility? I think it'd be huge if Maddie Wheeler comes back because she's really a great, really a great player all around. Great offensive player, great defensive player, adds a lot of speed to that group. And you talk about it this this year when Maddie Wheeler and Sarah Wasnevich were on the ice. Very tough to get the very tough for teams is very frustrating mm -hmm. because those two pressured the living daylights out of teams. And even on the penalty kill, she's one of the top, you know, you know, top skaters on the penalty kill. And I just think it would be very hard for me to see Maddie enter the transfer portal. I also think too, it would be hard for her to go to the PWHL. Just, I don't know where yeah. her, where her value would be in the draft per se. Um, so for her to come back for another year, I think it would be a great choice because she still has so much more to give. She at least has one more year. I think she would be. I think she could move up a line, which would be a great boost for this team, and I think a really great add. Now, for Katie Kotlowski, it wouldn't surprise me if she takes the Gray Shirley route. If she, where her last year, mm -hmm. she's just transferring to get some playing time. You know, we, we saw that with Gray Shirley a couple of years ago. Didn't really get it. Didn't really play much was was buried on that was buried on that on the lines you know was a fourth liner then goes to providence gets more playing time with the friars 
I could see that with Katie Kotlowski. I maybe she goes to one of those Minnesota schools, St. Thomas, Bemidji State, St. Cloud, Minnesota State. You're right, Minnesota State with the new coaching, I think would be a good fit for her. I also think with Brian Idolsky at St. Cloud State, the what they're building there at that program, I think Katie Kotlowski could come right in, be a good, you know, be a good leader for that group, get a little bit more playing time. I think she's a great second, she would be a great second liner if she finds the right situation for this team. Um, But yeah, both of those guys, both of them, I think still have another year left of college hockey to play under their belt. I just don't see either of these two leaving college hockey without some unfinished business uh, left to attend to. The the last player who you might see exit here is Jane Gervais. Um, She has another year of eligibility remaining maybe was supplanted in the rotation by Ava McNaughton down the stretch of this season. This is the second season now where Gervais has rotated starting goaltender duties during the regular season as she did so with Kami Cronish a year ago and then got supplanted in the postseason, was passed up for the starting role. Noah, what do you make of Jane Gervais? Do you think she stays? Do you think it's too early to tell? Do you just simply not want to speculate? Uh, Because I think she has a tough decision to make. I think she would absolutely be welcomed back. But don't know what she wants, what she values most out of her final year of eligibility. Yeah, it's a tough decision. It's a tough decision with what Jane Gervais has to, to make here. Because, look, first, you know, the year after they had, you know, the year after, you know, 2023, they had, it was kind of her year. It was her year to be the starter mm-hmm. and really kind of take over the role, you know, that was left for the pass goalie. And she did really well at the beginning, but then got hurt. And then Cammy kind of came in and they kind of rotated. And then after that, it was Cammy's ride the rest of the way. This year, same situation where it's kind of her show and she just never really won that battle to just never really won that battle solidly. And now here we go into this, the end of this season and Ava played phenomenally well. It, it's tough for me. You know, it, it's tough for me to, to see Jane. I just think stay here in this situation, given mm-hmm. for the fact that, I think Mark has. I think Coach Johnson has is set on his goalie for next year, and mm-hmm. it's going to be Ava, just because of how well she played in the postseason, and how well she played against the top teams, especially in the month of February. I mean, she was phenomenal in the month of February, and Jane. I, I it wouldn't surprise me if she hits the transfer portal too. I just think that she needs to go to a place where she can really thrive as the starter and and and, th- and be able to not have that pressure of looking over her shoulder and seeing oh there's another goalie that is as good as me or if not better than me and that player was Ava McNaughton and the other thing too I think that she has to keep in mind Ava's Ava was only a freshman this year if she comes back Jane's going to be a senior yeah. Ava's only going to be a sophomore I her odds you know her chances of potentially starting very slim and very thin at that point if she were to take an injury or if she were not able to try and get that starting spot. So she's got options, but man, all the options to me are saying, I think, you know, not good, not good options right now for her. It's a tough decision. And while coach Mark Johnson might have, his mind made when it comes to the postseason that it's going to be Ava again. She only played one time this year where she played on back-to-back days. Uh, it has not been Mark Johnson's MO over the last two seasons to give his his goaltenders full full reigns starting starting every single game. You wonder if he wants to continue that rotation. There's there's a lot to be seen there. Uh, but if Jane Gervais does not come back. I, I would imagine that 
Ava McNaughton is going to get a line share of starts. Maybe, maybe you see a little bit of something from Chloe Baker, but there isn't a goaltender coming in in this recruiting class that I want to touch on for just a second here. Uh, Wisconsin has a four skater recruiting class coming in this next season. Three forwards, one defender. And like we said, there are two defenders going out of the program, most likely unless uh, Anna Wilgren decides to apply for and gets that medical red shirt exemption. So Wisconsin probably has to go to the portal for another for another defender. And you have three forwards coming in, Hannah Helverson, Finley McCarthy, and Maggie Skinnell. Skinnell is the, the top-notch, the, the blue-chip prospect in this class, had captained uh, some of these world championship teams for Team USA, is very, very... It comes with a very high pedigree. The one thing about her, though, is that she is a center by, by training. And unless Casey O'Brien has a surprising departure, Wisconsin isn't losing any centers off of their roster. You wonder if she might go the Kirsten Sims route, who came up as a center through traditional training and ended up shifting to the wing and has obviously uh, been quite the prolific talent there. Noah, do you have any big takeaways from Wisconsin's incoming recruiting class. You know, it's a very good recruiting class and talking to Jackie Crum about all these players, really, it was a good class. They, they needed to add a lot of defensive depth on this team and some scoring. They got both of that with the way that they attacked this class. Anna Halverson won the state championship for Minnesota for her program. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that is something to be looking forward to if you're a Badger fan when you have a state champion on your list. And also, too, another thing about, you know, Hannah Halverson, she played high school hockey with Vivian Jungle. So there is a little bit of that, you know, there's a little bit of a connection there. Yep. It'll be it'll be interesting to see how she'll fit. But Maggie Scannell is the big one. I mean, if Badger fans right now, if you don't know who Maggie Scannell is, by the end of this season, wait till next season when she starts coming out and playing for the Badgers. She's a phenomenal player. And yep. you look at what she did for Team USA in the U18 squad and just all the excitement is there. I mean, it's there that the skating ability, you know, being able to generate some offense, stick handling, incredible stick handling, by the way. I mean, there was a video of her in, in, in a tournament of her just stick handling through defenders and scoring goal. I mean, it's it's really incredible what she's able to do. And I really like what she's going to be coming into with the situation because she's going to be behind potentially Casey O'Brien next year, you know, who's a center. She can learn from her, study from her, or as you said too, Kedrick, move her out to the wing spot where Kirsten Sims is at. That would also be another good spot. Kirsten Sims definitely could also teach her a few things out there, but – Scannell is the big one of that class, and yep. I think she's going to come in and she's going to have kind of a Cassie Hall type start. She's going to get off really hot at the beginning of the season, maybe cool down a bit, but then start to pick it up uh, in the midway stages of the season. Should be fascinating seeing these young batchers come in a lot of top end talent. Like you said, Hannah Helverson, a, a Minnesota state state champ with Vivian jungles playing for the Breck school, uh, same place that Wisconsin incoming point guard recruit. Daniel Freitag is coming from, uh, Finley McCarthy, a three-time New York state champion with Bishop Kearney, Maggie Skinnell, a team USA captain and, and Emma Venuzio on defense, a, a team Canada captain, a lot of, a lot of talents coming in for the Badgers re, reloading retooling this program is never rebuilding noah it's been phenomenal talking to you talking some some women's ice hockey so the season comes to a close sign off for us one more time and i'm sure we'll be talking to you soon oh yeah I mean, hopefully you know uh you guys can find me at rego clark on twitter uh the app formerly known as Twitter, obviously. And you can listen to the student section on WSUM Wednesdays, or sorry, Tuesdays, 6 to 7 on WSUM Stink Sports Tuesday. It's when all the WSUM sports shows usually happen on that one day. You can also catch me on a podcast that I do with Sam Jamini, who also does a Puckrums podcast, which is an hockey, which is a hockey podcast. Uh, we usually release our shows every Tuesday. And, uh, Every Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever Sam is free at the end of the day. Not the middle of the day, though. 
but all that type of stuff. And so Kedrick, again, thank you for having me on your show. It's been a blast getting to, to talk Badger women's hockey and I cannot wait for next season. I cannot wait to see what this Badger team does. This is going to be a fun 2024, 2025 season and on Wisconsin. On Wisconsin. I'm sure I'll be seeing you in Laban ice arena very soon. Noah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. A big, 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 big thank you to Noah for joining. He'll be back. He, he will be back. Uh, if you've watched the show for a while, we brought him on weekly at the closeout of this women's hockey season as he is intermission player interview radio voice of the Wisconsin Badgers for iHeartRadio and 1070 AM, the game in Madison for women's hockey games. He knows this team inside and out. Um, we also brought him on to talk a little bit of Packers since he has his own uh, NFL show. And he's just a great guy. So we loved having him on. And, and we're going to keep moving forward here as we hit basketball transfer portal crazy season. As I keep looking over and, and, and thinking, thinking, thinking something big is going to hit. Something big is going to hit. Uh, of course, Connor Asijan news hit last night. This is not going to be the last, last big basketball move in or out. Lots of stuff to come for the Wisconsin Badgers. We, we, we're going to break it all down here on the show. Uh, I also have a few transfer portal news pieces up on Badger Notes. Those are linked in the podcast description right now. Noah's work is always linked in the podcast description right now. And you can find us talking about it all here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. While you're here, leave a nice review, five stars, kind comments. It's really helping people join the show. We're going to keep doing great, great, great things on the show. New opportunities coming very quickly. All thanks to you. And until we talk to you then, until we talk to you very soon on Wisconsin. <laughs>